Research shows that in recent years, opioid overdoses are eclipsing deaths from automobile accidents. Kentucky, though, is showing some signs of progress in fighting the drug scourge through policy, treatment and recovery options, research and community responses. A conversation about Kentucky's opioid epidemic and strategies for saving lives. And part of our conversation was Dr. Sharon Walsh, who's with the University of Kentucky, uh, and she is part of the Drug and Alcohol Research Center that has recently earned an $87 million grant to help fight this uh, opioid epidemic and that can be used as a nationwide model, but it has a, a, an ambitious goal, Dr. Walsh. Tell us about that. Yes, the goal of the Healing Community Study is to reduce opioid overdose deaths by 40 percent in three years. And many people would say that sounds really ambitious and it's a bold goal, but you think it's highly doable. I do think it's doable. Um, in our field, what we know is that we have a lot of evidence-based interventions that are effective at saving lives but sometimes we have a difficult time deploying those. Mm -hmm. And so we have inadequate um, access and uptake. And so one of the primary goals of this study is to help communities mobilize and to expand access to evidence-based care and overdose prevention. And when you say evidence-based care, can you give us some examples of what you mean by that? Yes, so what we know uh, from all many studies over decades is that medications that are approved by the FDA for the treatment of opioid use disorder are very, very effective in saving lives. So we're fortunate in the field of opioid use studies that we have three different medications. They all work a little differently, mm -hmm. but have been approved by the FDA and have been demonstrated to have all kinds of benefits. They, they protect against overdose, they improve psychosocial function, they restore um, families. I mean, mm -hmm. so we know that they're very, very effective, but um, we have a lot of barriers to having people access those. And some people are concerned that you're swapping one drug for another. You would address that how? Yeah, so I think that that's just a misconception um, because um, in the case of opioids, there's a very profound physical dependence uh, syndrome that accompanies being exposed repeatedly. So if you were to go into the hospital and be exposed to opioids for maybe seven days after a big surgery or something like that, you would develop physical dependence to mm -hmm. opioids potentially. But that doesn't mean that you actually have an addiction to opioids. Those are two separate things. And I think sometimes it's very hard for people that are unfamiliar with the, with the nature of uh, opioid use disorder to understand that difference. And so the medications that are used to treat opioid use disorder they are used really to um, occupy the receptor in the brain that uh, where opioid effects are mediated and to prevent heroin or another drug from binding there. So mm -hmm. they really block the effects of illicit opioids, which um, means that people then stop using. They um, suppress withdrawal. Mm -hmm. And so withdrawal is so profound and painful right. that that's a big um, uh, driver of continued use and they reduce craving and they stabilize the physiological dependence and put the disease into remission. And so what we wanna see is the initial symptoms of the disease, which is drug use right. being reduced. And so the medications are very effective at producing that remission. And then that gives people an opportunity to work on their recovery, which is a longer term right. um, goal. Well, thank you, Dr. Sharon Walsh, and there's more that you'll hear from her coming up on connections about opioid epidemic and how the University of Kentucky is responding. Also, Andrea James with the office of uh, the mayor, Linda Gordon, will be here to talk about the community strategies that Lexington Fayette County has taken on. That's coming on Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time on KET, the main channel. It's 6 p.m. Eastern Time on KET2, and you can watch online anytime after that at KET.org slash connections. Hope you'll join us.